registered upon our brazen tombs and make us heirs of all eternity. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Therefore, great conquerors, for so you are, that war against your own affection and the huge army of the world's desire, I will relate to you shall stand strongly in force. Our court shall be a little academic, still yet complicated in living force. You three, Barone, Dumaine, and Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes recorded in this year's schedule. Your oaths are passed, and now <coughs> subscribe your names. That his own hand may strike his own down, he who violates the smallest branch here. I am resolved, tis but a three year task. The mind shall banquet, though the body climb. That pouches have lean pates and dainty fits, make which the lips that banquet quite the worst. My lord, Lord, the man is mortified. The grosser manner of these words of life, he throws upon an old gross face of slaves. To love, to wealth upon, I pine and die to all these. Living in philosophy. <laughs> so much, dear liege, I have already sworn. That is, to live and study here for three years. But there are other experiences, as not to see a woman in that term, and then one day a week to touch no food, and but one meal on every day besides, and, and then to sleep but three hours in the night? All these are very tasks, too hard to keep. Not to see ladies, study, fast, not sleep. Your oaths of past, to pass away from these, and let me say no, my liege. And if you please, I only swore to study here with your grace and to live here in your court for three years' space. You swore to that, Baron, and to the rest. By nay, by yea, and nay, sir, that I swore in chest. What is the end of study? Let me know. Why, that to know what else we should not know. Oh, come on, I will swear to study so. Do you know the thing I'm forbid to know? As where I well may dine, and I to feast expressly am forbid, or where to meet some mistress fine man. Mistresses from common sense are hid. These be vain delights that train our intellect to vain delights. Oh, why all delights are vain? Is earth like study? Is that heaven's glorious sun that will not be deep searched with saucy looks? These earthly god brothers of heaven's light that give a name to every fixed star. I'm no more prophet of their shining lights than those that walk and what not what they are. How well he's read to reason against reason. Proceed with all to stop all good proceedings. He weeds the corn and still has go the weeding. Well, sit out. Go home, Baron. I do. No, my leech, I've sworn to stay with you. And though I have regard for this book, more than that angel knowledge you can say, give me the paper, let me read the same, and to the strictest decrees, I'll write my name. Oh, how well this yielding rescues me from shame. I know that no woman shall come within a mile of my court. This been proclaimed? Four days ago. Let's see the penalty. On pain of losing her tongue. Who device this? Mary, that's about. Sweet woman, why? To fright them hence with that term penalty. <laughs> a dangerous law against gentility. I admit that any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. This article, my liege, you yourself must break. For well, you know, here comes it, and to see the French king's guard with yourself to speak about surrender up of Aquitaine to her decrepit, sick, and bedridden father. Why, my lords, this was quite forgotten. The study of her more is overshot. We must dispense of this decree. She must like your own mere necessity. Necessity will make us all forsworn. Three thousand times within this three years space. And if I break faith, this word shall speak for me. I am forsworn on mere necessity. So to the laws at large, I write my name. He that breaks them in the least degree stands in the tanger for eternal shame. But is there a quick recreation granted? Aye. 
that there is our fortune of his humble daughter, fine traveler of Spain. One who knew all the world's fashion to them. One whom his own vain tongue doth ravish like enchanting harmony. Uh, how you delight, my lords, I know not. But I, I protest, I do love to hear him lie, and I will use him as my minstrelsy. Don Armado is the most illustrious wife. I'm at, a, I'm at five hundred new words. Fashion's own knight. Crossart, that slain, and he shall be our sport. And so to study three years is but short. Which is the Duke's own person? The cell mother's. I myself will pretend his own person, for I am the greatest fair. But I would see his own person in flesh and blood. This is he. Signor, Signor, I, I commend you this villainy of you. This letter will tell you more. The contempts thereof are as touching me. Ah, a letter from the magnificent Armado. Draw a drink of patience. To hear or prepare to hear it. To hear me, and to bear both. Ah, sir, be this. The style shall give us cause to climb in the merriment. The matter is to me, sir, as concerning Jacqueline Meadows. The matter, I believe, I was taking with the men. What matter? In the manner to our folly, sir, all of three. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting with her upon the form, and taken, following her, into the park, which put together is a manner to our folly. Not, sir, to the manner. It is the manner of a man to speak to a woman. <coughs> Simplicity of man to hearken after the flesh. Will you hear this letter of attention? <coughs> so it is this siege with sable colored melancholy. I betook myself to walk. The time when, about the sixth hour, when beasts most raised, birds best peck, and men sit down to that nourishment which is called supper. So much for the time. When? Then to the place where, where, I mean, I did encounter the obscene and most preposterous event. I mean, thy like park. There did I see that low spirited swain. Me. The base minnow, thy myrrh. Me. That unlettered small in soul. Still me. That shallow vessel, <coughs> which, as I remember, <coughs> the high cost of it. Oh, me. Sorted and consorted. Contrary to thy established pretendite, with a wit. With a wench. With a child of our grandmother Eve, a female, or, for thy most sweet understanding, a woman. Him I, as my ever esteem <laughs> duty pricks me on, have brought to thee to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet grace's officer, Anthony Dole, a man of good repute and estimation. The aunt shall please you. I am Anthony Dole. For Jacqueline Meta, so is the weaker vessel called. I shall, at the least of thy sweet notice, bring her to trial. Thine in all compliments of heart burning duty, Don Adriado de Armado. <laughs> Sira, have I heard of this? I do confess much of the hearing it, but little of the marking of it. It was marked a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. I was taken with none, sir. I was taken with the damsel. It was for a damsel. If it were, I denied her virginity. She was a maid. This maid will not serve your turn, sir. This maid will serve my turn, <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir, I will pronounce your sentence. You shall pass a week with brandy water. I have rather pray a month with mutton and porridge. And Donna Giorgio shall be a keeper. Her own, see them to the door. And good lords, let us be off to keep that which we are so strongly for him. Lay my hands and any good man's hands. These oats and laws will prove an idle squad. Sure, I'll come on. Suffer for the truth, sir. For true it is, I was taken with that And Jack Rometta is a true girl. So therefore, suffer the sour cup of prosperity. Affliction may one day smile at him. And till she dies.
expert strength. Yet with Solomon so seduced, we had a very good wit. Cupid's butt shot is too hard for Hercules blood, and therefore too much odd for a Spaniard's rapier. Adieu, valor, trust, rapier. Be still, drum, for your manager is in love. Yea, he loveth. Assist me, some god of its temporal rhyme, for I am sure I shall turn a sonnet. <laughs>
Court of Navarre. Fair, I have not heard, and welcome I gave you guys. The roof of this court is too high to be yours. I welcome to the field to face to you. Madam, you shall be welcome to my court. I will be welcome, and I be thither. Hear me, dear lady. I have sworn a low. <laughs> Our lady, help my lord. Who will be the sworn? For the world, you know, by my will. Why will so dreadful and nothing else? Your ladyship is ignorant what it is. Oh, my lord, so his ignorance were wise. Where knowledge now it is proven this ignorance. I think the grace is one of housekeeping to set us in to keep that of knowing and sense of grateful. But pardon me, I would choose some ball to teach a teacher ill this evening. I'll save the purpose of my coming, and suddenly you saw me in my Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner than I will write, if you will prove perjured if you make a mistake. Did I not dance with you in Braven once? Did I not dance with you in Braven once? I know you did. How many of us must have been trust the question? Oh, I mustn't be so fast. This long of you that spur me with such questions. Oof, your wit is too hot. It speaks too fast. It's well tired. Not to leave the lad in the mire. What time of day? And the hour of that fool should ask. <laughs> Madam, your father here doth intimate the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, being but the one half of an entire sum disposed by my father in his wars. But say that she, or we, has neither have received that sum, and there remains on paying a hundred thousand more, in surety of the which one part of Africa is bound to us. If then the king, your father, will restore but the one half that isn't satisfied, we will give up our right to Africa and hold fair friendship with his majesty. But that, it seems, he little purpose. For here he doth demand the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, yet not demands who have this title live in Aquitaine. <laughs> Dear Princess, where is your press not so far from reason's yielding? You yourself should make a yield and get some reason in my breast, and go well satisfied with friends again. You do the king my father too much wrong, and wrong the reputation of your name, and so confusing to confess your suit. Or we've had for so fatal have been paid. Uh, I will say I've never heard of it. And if you prove it, I'll be paid. Or you have a back with me. We will arrest your work. We ain't getting the acquaintance of such a special son of Charles, his father. Satisfy me so. So please, Your Grace, the packet has not yet come. When that and other specialties are bound, tomorrow you shall have a sight of them. It shall suffice me. At which interview, all liberal reasons are your yield on to. Meantime, receive such welcome at my hand. You may not come, fair princess, within my gates, but you shall deem yourself lodged within my heart. Sweet health and fair desire, consort your grace. And I will. Ladies, I will commend you to my own heart. We would be glad to see it. Could you hear it grunt? Is the fool sick? Oh, sick of the heart. Alack, the blood. Oh, would that do it good? My physics, says I. Oh, I would you prick it with your eye? <laughs> no point, with my knife. Oh, now God save that away. And yours from long living. Oh, I cannot stay that. Wedded or no? By it to her will, sir. Sir. Welcome. 
welcome, sir. I do. Farewell to me, sir, and welcome to you. I beseech your word. What is she in the light? A woman sometimes, and you saw her in the light. Perchance, like your light, I desire her name. She hath but one for herself, the desire of her shame. Pray you, sir, whose daughter? Her mother's, I have heard. God's blessing on your beard. Good sir, be not offended. She is an Arab falcon. Nay, my poor has ended. She is a most sweet lady.
nothing but this. But it is significant to the country made Jakarta. There is remuneration. Go follow. Like the single eye, see your star. Adieu. Now I will not seek to spill the poor dear's blood in my heart in this noble. 
Do not curse wives or that self-sovereignty only for praise sake when they strive to be lords over their lords. So pray is the praise we may afford to any lady that subdues the lord. God, take ye dead and all. Praise, which is the head lady? Thou fellow shall know her by the rest that has no heads. <laughs> which is the greatest lady, the highest, the thickest and the tallest? The thickest and the tallest. It is so. Truth is truth. And your waist, mistress, were as slender as my wit. One of these maids her own swore your waist should be thick. Are you not the chief woman? You are the thickest here. <laughs> <sighs> what is your will, sir? What is your will? I have a letter from one Monsieur Barone to one Lady Rossi. Oh, that letter, that letter. He's a good friend of mine. Stand aside your barrier for you if you can cut. Break up this room. I'm bound to serve. This letter is not here. It is written to Jack the letter. We will read it, I swear. Break the neck of the wax and everyone give ear. More fairer than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself, have commiseration on thy heroical vassal. The magnanimous king said I upon the indubitable beggar. Then, vidi vici, he came, sword overcame. He came, one, saw, two, overcame, three, who came, the king. Why did he come? To see. What did he see? The beggar. To whom came he? The beggar. Who overcame he? The beggar. <coughs> the conclusion is victory. The nuptial is the catastrophe. I am the king, thou the beggar, for so witness thy lowliness. Shall I command thy love? I could. Shall I enforce thy love? I may. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. What shalt thou exchange for rags? Robes for tittles? Titles for thyself? Me. Thus expecting thy reply, I profane my lips on thy foot, my eyes on thy picture, and my heart on thy every part. Thine, Don Adriano de Armado. What plume of feathers he that indicted this letter? <laughs> what vein, what red cock? Did you ever hear better? This Armado is a Spaniard, and keeps here in court, one that makes sport to the prince and his bookmates. Thou fellow.
friend a letter to the secret of a stranger queen which she had the Sarah. Tripping all my sweet, and the letter was such as the royal hand of the king, it made me so much. Good girl, stop going with me. Sir, God save your life. <laughs>
most divine fate. By heaven, a wonder in a mortal eye. Her umber mirror for girl with amber quoted. <laughs> as ever I see her spare his day. Look upon her heavenly brow that is not blinded by her majesty. 
Barone. My mistress is a bright moon. She is but an attending star. Scarcely the light. My eyes are no eyes, nor I Barone. Of all complexions, the old serenity you do meet us in the fair and her fair cheek. Of just the sun that maketh all things shine. But what of this? Are we not all in love? Well, I'm not so sure that I offer so much. Aye, married her, so flattery for this evil. Oh, some authority, some tricks, some puts, how to cheat the devil. Some self perjury. Says more than me. How about you then, affections and only lost? Consider what you first did swear unto. To fast, to study, and to see no women. What treason against the kingly state of you? For when would you, my liege? For you, for you, in legal contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of you these tutors have enriched you with. Other soul arts entirely keep the brain, and scarce show harvest of their heavy toil. Love, first learned in the lady's eye, lives not alone in order in the brain, but with the motion of all elements. Courses sweat as thought is every power, and gives to every power a double power. For valor, is love not a Hercules? When heaven sings, the voice of all the gods make heaven drowsy with their harmony. From women's eyes, this doctrine I derive. There are the books, the arts, the academics that show, contain, and nourish all the world. Then fools you where these women of first swear, for keeping what is sworn, you will be fools. For wisdom's sake, a word that all men love. For love's sake, a word that loves all men. For men's sake, the authors of these women. For women's sake, by whom we men are men. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. It is religion to be thus forsworn. For charity itself fulfills the law, and who can sever love from charity? Saint Cupid! And soldiers to the fields. Advance your standards and upon the board. Shall we resolve to move these girls of beds? And bring them too. Let us devise some entertainment for them in their tents. At first, let us conduct them thither. Home to every man attached to the hand of his fair mistress. And in the afternoon, we will with some strength pass time solace them. For rebels, dancers, masks, and merry hours. For us, I love, strewing the way with flowers. Away! Away! It will be time. I know it. I know
B-E-T. You could have a neighbor, 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 neighbor. This is indeed me with the same Did you dance like this one? Did you hear it down there? Men of peace were enchanted. Most of the sir. Salutations. They figured a great feast of languages and stole all the scraps. <laughs> oh, they have lived long on the Alm basket of work. I marvel thy master has not eaten beef for a morning. The tongue are not so long by the head as on a river for the two in the tide. Thou art easier swallowed than a flat drum. Peace, the peel begins. Madam, are you not living? Yes, yes, she teaches boys the horn book. What is A B spelt backwards with a horn on its head? Bob waits over the horn. <laughs> bah, bah, silly sheep with a horn, you hear her learning. <laughs> now, by the salt wave of the Mediterranean, my quick belly of wits, it's now quick at home, it rejoices with my intellect. <laughs> Offered by a child to an old man, which is <laughs> wet old. <laughs> oh, and had I but one penny in the world, thou shouldst have it to buy gingerbread. Hope, there is the very remuneration. Had I a thy master, thou hast any purse of wit. And the heavens were so pleased with that word, that my master, what a joyful father, was thou made to me. Art, Signora, we have it. We will be singled from the barbers. Do you not educate the youth that are on top of the mountain? I do, sans question. Madam, it is the king's most noble sweet and to congratulate the princess at her pavilion in the posteriors of this day, which the rude multitude do call the afternoon. The posterior of this day, most generous sir, is liable, congruent, and measurable. And the word afternoon is well cold, chose, sweet, and yet. I do assure you, sir, I do assure. Signora, the king is a noble gentleman, and my committed, I do assure you. I must tell thee it would please his grace sometime by the world to dally with his fingers, my mustachio, but <laughs> with <a> us. <laughs> by the world, I recount no favor. Some certain honors it pleases his greatness to impart to Armado, a soldier, a man of travel that hath seen the world. Bless us. The very all of all is, but sweetheart, I do implore secrecy that the king would have me his enemy. Princess Sweet Chuck, with some delightful ostentation or show or pageant or antique or firework. Now, understanding that the curate and your sweet self are good at such eruptions and sudden breaking out of mirth, as it were, I have acquainted you with all to the end to crave your assistance. <laughs> The nine worthies. Sir Dan, as concerning some entertainment of time, so shall we put his part of the series of this day to be rendered by our assistance. And by the command of the king, and by this most generous, illustrate, and learned gentleman before the princess, I say no subject as a present. The nine worthies. Where will you find those worthy enough to present them? Yourself, myself, this gallant gentleman, the swain, this page, Hercules. Father, <laughs> <laughs> Signora, error. He's not so big at the end of his club. Shall I have an audience? He shall enter and exit, strangling a snake. I do apologize for this reason. And then if any of the audience hiss, you may cry, Well done, Hercules, now thou crushest the snake. Dear good Mandel, thou hast not spoken all this while. Nor understood, none neither, madame. Allons, we will employ thee. It may happen for us or two, and more, anon. I'll make one in the 
dance, or so I shall play on the tabor to the worthies, and let them dance the hay. Ah, oh, good doll, honest doll, to our sport, away! Mm -hmm. And 
not the monks in the mindset. But that contempt will quite kill the speaker part, and very much divorce in memory from his power. And therefore I do it, and I make no doubt. The rest will do near if he come out. There is no such sport as proper sport over the throne to make them hours and hours and hours. Oh. But shall we dance if they desire us to? No, till death we will not know what would merge to their tennis feet when we go to face. And while to scope, each turn away her face. The trumpet sounds. You must. The mask is come. Put the tents and run for us at land. The 
music plays. How come you does a strange? Mm -hmm. Yes, still she is the moon, and I the man. The music plays, love sings a motion to it. I guess I'll speak it. But your legs should do it. <laughs> um, uh, since you are strangers that come here by chance, will not be nice. Why take we hands then? <laughs> only to our friends. Courtesy sweethearts. And so the measure ends. If you did not to dance, let's hold more chat. In private then. I am best pleased with that. <laughs> Five hundred messages. One sweet bird with day. Honey of milk and sugar. They're free. One bird in secret. Let it not be sweet. A grievous to my god. Gall! Bitter. Is that for me? Friend Lee, will you watch Sigmund? We could change your work. Me? Friend Lee. Say you so, Friend Lauren. Take that for your fair way, Venus. Please, if you do. As much as the driver. And I'll be there to you. What? <coughs> is your visit being <coughs> not come? I know what things may be. Why do you ask? Oh, for your reason. Quickly, sir, I long. You have a double tongue within your mouth, and therefore my speech is in half. No, all not for your half. Take all of me that is made prove it all. Will you give warrants, shall say? Do not so. Then buy a pack before your horns will grow. One word and pack it with you ere I die. Please talk me then, the butcher hears your cry. <coughs> the tongues of mocking wenches are as keen as the razor's edge, invisible, cutting it air. Smaller than they be seen, their conceits have wings. Leaves and arrows, bullets, thoughts, wings, swifter things. Break up, my maid, not one word more. Oh, heavens, I'll try beating with pure skull. Farewell, Matt Lynches. You have simple wit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
all hell, sweet madam, and fair time of day. Fairly all hell, as far as I can see. Consume my speeches better if you may. Then wish me better, I'll give you leave. We came to visit you, and trust us not to leave you for a court. This field shall hold me, and so hold your fight. Nor God, nor I delights in perjured men. But rebuke me not for that which you provoke. The virtue of your eye must break my oath. Your nickname, Virtue. Vice, she should have spoke, for virtue's offers never breaks no stroke. But we have pastimes here, and pleasant games, and a mass of Russian left us, <laughs> but of late. How, madam? Russians? I in truth, my lord. Two gallons full of courtship and estate. Ye speak true, my lord. My lady to the manner of the base in courtesy gives undeserving praise. We four indeed confront the world with war and Russian habits. Here they stayed an hour and talked apace. But in that hour, my lord, they did not bless us with one happy word. I do not call them fools, but this I think. <clears throat> this just is dry to me. Very gentle, sweet, your wit makes wise things foolish. Your capacity is of that huge store where which things seem poor and wise things but foolish. Well, you are proved wise and rich, for in my eyes... I am full and full of poverty. Oh, I am yours and all that I possess. All, all the full mine? I, I cannot give you less. Which of the wizards was it that you wore? <laughs> Where, um, what, what was it? Why did I do this? There, then, that wizard, that superfluous case that hit the worst and showed the better piece. We've described, my lords. The moth is now done right. Let us confess and turn it to a jest. Amazed, my lord. Why look your hands sad? Oh, how cold is the brows? Why you look so pale, you soul? Maybe seasick? Coming from Muscovy. <laughs> <laughs> Thus pour the star stout flakes for perjury. Here said thy lady, dart thy me, thrust thy sharp wit, quite through my ignorance. Oh, never again will I trust the speech's pen, or come and visit to my friend, or woo and rhyme like a blind harper's song. Tap into phrases, silken terms precise, three piled hyperboles, spruce aspectation. I do first read them and here I protest by this white hand. Oh, I think love, God knows. I love to be a son. Sounds darker as well. Sounds, sounds. I pray you. Bear with me, I'm sick. So, let's see, right here, have mercy on us, on those three. They are infected, in their hearts it lies. They have the plague, and caught out of your eyes. These three lords are visited, and you are not preferred. On you, the Lord's tokens do I see. No, they were afraid they gave these tokens to us. See the trick on it. Here was a consent, knowing a forehand of our merriment, to dash it like a prisoner's comedy, some, some carry tale, some please man, some slight zenning. He that smiles his cheek in the years and knows the trick to make my lady laugh when she's disposed, told our intents before. Which one disposed? The ladies did change favor. And then we, following the signs, moved by the signs of sheep, fully had this brave marriage, this career, been run. Welcome to it. Pass up our way. Oh, Lord, <coughs> sir, they would know whether the worthy shall come out or no. Go, bid them prepare. We will turn it finally out, sir. We will take some care. Jerome, let them not approach. They will shame us. Oh, we are shame us, my lord. And to some mouse have one show worse than the kings of this company. I say, they shall not come. Nay, my lord, let me overrule you now. That sport best pleases a dog and we smoke. With seals back to content, a conjunctive and seal of which that is present. A good description of our sport, my lord.
great, great, great Pompeii. How can they huge? Yeah, Hector trembles. Pompeii is moved. It's for the months. Here it's a moment. I did not challenge thee. I'll not fight with the pole like a northern man. I'll slash. I'll do it by the sword. Make room for the incest for these. I'll do it in my shirt. Most dressed in Pompeii. Master, let me take you a button for longer. Do you not see Pompey's on PC for the combat? Not me, you will lose your reputation. <laughs> Did the men and soldiers spot me? I will not combat in my ship. You may not deny it. Pompey has made a challenge. time extremely paces. You may not leave now with friends such newly found. I am saying not. My dear friend, On honest plains, best pierce the ear of three. By these badges, understand the king. For your fair sake, have we neglected time. Played foul play with our oaths. Your beauty, ladies, have much deformed us. Fashioning our humors even to the opposed end of our intents. And what in us has seemed so ridiculous, those heavenly eyes of yours that look deep into these faults suggested us to make. We did receive your letters. Full of love, your favor is the ambassador of your love. But not like a fashion merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than jest. So nervous. We did not quote them so. Madam, at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your love. A time for things to show, to make the world without end, Martin. No, no, my lord, your grace is pretty much full of dear guiltiness and their pleasures. This shall only do for me. Your oath I will not trust, but go with speed to some relief and naked hermitage remote from all the pleasures of the world, and all stir in sociable life. Then the expiration of the year, come challenge me, challenge me. And by this virgin palm, my kissing thine, I will be fine. Shut my womb full up in a mournful house, raining the tears of limitation, the remembrance of my father's sin. If ever so I do deny that our hands part, neither in title nor the other side. This, or more than this, I would deny. Thy naked hermitage doth lie in my breast. Shall I 
say I thank you, gentle wife. Not so, my lord. A twelve month in a day, I'll mark no words that smooth faced words say. Come when the king doth to my lady come. Then if I have much love, I'll give you some. I'll show thee true and faithfully till then. Let's say to Maria. That's what poor said. I'll change him back down for a piece of time. I'll say with patience, but the time is long. The young is used to tell her so young. Studies, my lady. Mistress, look upon me, the window of my heart, mine eye, and pose on me some service for thy love. After I've heard of him, my lord Baron, before I saw you, and the words large tongue proclaims it for a man the thief of mocks, which you are also to execute, which I will be mercy of your wit. Tweet this wormwood from your fruitful brain, wherewithal to me, if you please. You shall this twelve month term, from day to day, visit the speechless sick, and so converse with glowing wretches. In your task shall be, with all the fierce endeavor of your wit, to enforce the pain and put me to smile. To move wild laughter into the throat of death? It cannot be, it is impossible. Wait, that's the way to choke a jibbing spirit, whose influence is begot of that loose grace which shall walk in heresy to kings. A just prosperity lies in the ear of him that hears it, never in the tongue of him that makes it. Then, if sickly ears, deafened with the claims of their own dear goals, shall fear your idle scorns, continue then, and I shall have you in the whole world. But if they will not, throw away that spirit. And I shall find you enter of the of that thought. My two thoughts are the creation. Twelve month. Well, the fall what will befall. I'll just the twelve month in a hospital. I sweet my lord, and so I take my leave. Not so, madam. We will bring you on your way. A woman does not end like an old play. Jack hath not joked. His lady's courtesy might well have made our sports accommodate. Right. It's the 12th month. 